This is a special presentation of AreaCable.com and the Area Guides Network. Produced by CraigShip.com with special guests from around the globe. I'm Peter McDermott, and now on to our feature presentation. Okay, Monica, take it away. Hi, everyone. Tonight we will be reading Much Ado About Nothing all of Act 1, and we will, most of us will be taking several parts, so if you see us um, visually differentiate ourselves by wearing a hat, we have switched parts. My name is Monica, and I will be reading the part of Beatrice, and then also Claudio. When I wear the hat, I'll be Claudio. And Alex, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Alex, and I will be reading the parts tonight of Leonato and Conrad. Uh, fortunately, they're in different scenes, so I don't have to worry about not having a hat. <laughs> Hi, my name is Glenn Rogers, and I'll be, be, be reading the role of Benedict this evening, and I have no hat. I'm Nathan, and I will be playing uh, Don Pedro, and I will also be reading role of Baraccio. Who has a hat? I'm Phil, and I will be single-tasking the role of messenger with no hat. And my name is Sharon, and I will be reading the roles of Hero, as well as Don John. <coughs> I learn in this letter that Don Peter of Aragon comes this night to Messina. He is very near by this. He was not three leagues off when I left him. How many gentlemen have you lost in this action? But few of any sort, and none of name. A victory is twice itself when the achiever brings home full numbers. I find here that Don Peter hath bestowed much honor on a young Florentine named Claudio. Much deserved on his part, and equally remembered by Don Pedro. He hath borne himself beyond the promise of his age, doing in the figure of a lamb the feats of a lion. He hath indeed better bettered expectation than you must expect of me to tell you how. He hath an uncle here in Messina will be very much glad of it. I have already delivered him letters, and there appears much joy in him, even so much that joy could not show itself modest enough without a badge of bitterness. Did he break out into tears? In great measure. A kind overflow of kindness. There are no faces truer than those that are so washed. How much better is it to weep a joy than to joy a weeping? I pray you, is Signor Mountanato returned from the wars or no? I know of none of that name, lady. There was none such in the army of any sort. What is he that you ask for, niece? My cousin means Signor Benedict of Padua. Oh, he's returned, and as pleasant as ever he was. He set up his bills here in Messina, and challenged Cupid at the flight. And my uncle's fool, reading the challenge, subscribed for Cupid, and challenged him at the bird bolt. I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in these wars? But how many hath he killed? For indeed, I promise to eat all of his killing. Faith, niece, you tax Signor Benedict too much, but he'll be meet with you, I doubt it not. He hath done good service, lady, in these wars. You had musty victual, victual, and he hath helped to eat it. He is a very valiant trencherman. He hath an excellent stomach. And a good soldier, too, lady. And a good soldier to a lady. But what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtues. It is so, indeed. He is no less than a stuffed man, but for the stuffing, well, we are all mortal. You must not, sir, mistake, my niece. There is a kind of merry war betwixt Signor Benedict and her. They never meet, but there is a skirmish of wit between them. Alas, he gets nothing by that. In our last conflict, four of his five wits went halting off, and now is the whole man governed with one, so that if he have wit enough to keep himself warm, let him bear it for a difference between himself and his horse, for it is all the wealth that he hath left, to be known to be a reasonable creature. 
Who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. Is it possible? Very easily possible. He wears his faith but as the fashion of his hat. It ever changes with the next block. I see, lady, the gentleman is not in your books. No, and he were, I would burn my study. But I pray you, who is his companion? Is there no young square that will now make a voyage with him to the devil? He is most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He is sooner caught than the pestilence, and the taker runs presently mad. God help the noble Claudio. If he hath caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pound ere he be cured. I will hold friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. You will never run mad, niece. No, not till a hot January. Don Pedro is approached. Good Signor Leonato, you are come to meet your trouble. The fashion of the word is to avoid cost, and you encounter it. Never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. For trouble being gone, comfort should remain. But when you depart from me, sorrow abides and happiness takes his leave. You embrace your charge too willingly. I think this is your daughter. Her mother hath many times told me so. Were you in doubt, sir, that you asked her? Signor Benedict, no, for then were you a child. You have it full, Benedict. We may guess by this what you are, being a man. Truly, the lady fathers herself. Be happy, lady, for you are like an honorable father. If Signor Leonardo be her father, she would not have his head on her shoulders for old Messina, as like him as she is. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What, my dear lady Disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible Disdain should die while she hath such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself much convert to Disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat, but it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you accepted. And I, would have, I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women. They would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God and my cold blood. I am of your humor for that. I had rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. Oh, God keep your ladyship still in that mind. So some gentleman or other shall scape a predestined scratched face. Scratching could not make it worse, and twerce a, a face such as yours were. Well, you are a rare parrot teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. <laughs> I would my horse had the speed of your tongue, and so good a continuer. But keep your way, in God's name I have done. You always end with a jade's trick. I knew you of old. That is the sum of all, Leonato. Signor Claudio and Signor Benedict, my dear friend Leonato hath invited you all. I tell him we shall stay here at the least a month, and he heartily prays some occasion may detain us longer. I dare swear he is no hypocrite, but prays from his heart. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled to the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I am not of many words, but I thank you. Please it your grace, lead on. Your hand, Leonato. We will go together. Benedict, didst thou note the daughter of Signor Leonato? I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? Do you question me, as an honest man should do? For my simple true judgment, or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? No, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why, in faith, methinks she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. Only this commendation I can afford her, that were she other than she is, she were unhandsome, and being no other but as she is, I do not like her. Thou thinkest I am in sport. I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and a case to put it into. 
But speak you with this, uh, this with a, la a sad brow, or do you play the flouting jack to tell us Cupid is a good hair finder and Vulcan a rare carpenter? Come, in, in what key shall a man take you to go in the song? In mine eye, she is the sweetest lady that I ever looked on. I can see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. Oh, there's her cousin, and she were not possessed with a fury, exceeds her as much in beauty as the first of May doth the last of December. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary, if Hero would be my wife. Has it come to this? In faith, hath not the world one man, but he will wear his cap with suspicion? Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? Go to, in faith, and thou wilt these thrust thy neck into a yoke, wear the print of it in the Sioway Sundays. Look, it's Don Pedro's return to seek you. What secret hath held you here that you followed not to Leonato's? I would, your grace, would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. You hear, Count Claudio, I can be secret as a dumb man. I would have you think so, I would have think I would have you think so, but on my allegiance, mark you this. On my allegiance, he is in love. With who? Now that is your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. With hero, Leonardo's short daughter. If this were so, so were it uttered. Like the old tale, my lord, it is not so, nor twas not so, but indeed, God forbid, it should be so. If my passion change not shortly, God forbid it should be otherwise. Amen, if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and troths, my lord, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. And could never maintain his part but in the force of his will. That a woman conceive me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But that I will give a recheat, wind it in my forehead, or hang my bugle in an invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me. Because I will not do them the wrong to mistrust any. I will do myself the right to trust none. And the fine is, for which I may go the finer, I will live a bachelor. I shall see thee, ere I die, look pale with love. With anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, not with love. Prove that ever I lose more blood with love than I will get again with drinking. Pick out mine eyes with a ballad maker's pen and hang me up at the door of a brothel house for the sign of blind Cupid. Well, if thou dost, if ever thou dost fall from this faith, thou wilt prove a notable argument. If I do, hang me in a bottle like a cat and shoot at me. And he that hits me, let him be clapped on the shoulder and called Adam. Well, as time shall try, in time the savage bull doth bear the yoke. The savage bull may, but if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck off the bull's horns and set them in my forehead, and let me be vilely painted, and in such great letters as they write, here is good horse to hire, let them signify under my sign, here you may see Benedict, the married man. If this should ever happen, thou wouldst be horn mad. Nay, if Cupid hath not spent all his quiver in Venice, thou wilt quake, quake for this shortly. I look for an earthquake too, then. Well, you temporize with the hours. In the meantime, good Signor Benedict, repair to Leonato's. Commend me to him, and tell him I will not fail him at supper, for indeed he hath made great preparation. I have almost matter enough in me for such an embossage, and so I commit you. To the tuition of God, from my house if I had it, the 6th of July, your loving friend, Benedict. Nay, mock not, mock not. The body of your discourse is sometime guarded with fragments, and the guards are but slightly basted on neither. Ere you flout old ends any further, examine your conscience, and so I leave you. My liege, your highness may, may do me good. 
My love is thine to teach. Teach it but how, and thou shalt see how apt it is to learn any hard lesson that may do thee good. Hath Leonato any son, my lord? No child but hero. She's his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? O oh, my lord, when you went onward on this ended action, I looked upon her with a soldier's eye, that liked but had a rougher task in hand, than to drive liking to the name of love. But now I am returned, and that war thoughts have left their places vacant in their rooms, come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young hero is, saying, I liked her ere I went to the wars. Thou wilt be like a lover presently, and tire the hearer with a book of words. If thou dost love fair hero, cherish it, and I will break with her and with her father, and thou shalt have her. Was not to this end that thou begannst to twist so fine a story? How sweetly do you minister to love, that no loves grief by his complexion. But lest my liking might too sudden seem, I would have salve, salved it with a longer treatise. What need the bridge much broader than the flood? The fairest grant is the necessity. Look, what will serve is fit. Tis once thou lovest, and I will fit thee with the remedy. I know we shall have reveling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise and tell fair hero I am Claudio, and in her bosom I'll unclasp my heart and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then after to her father will I break, and the conclusion is she shall be thine. In practice let us put it presently. And there we have the end of Act One. Scene. Oh, bravo. Oh, scene one. That's scene two. Sorry, we have scene two. <laughs> and we will be starting scene two now. <laughs> How now, brother? Where is my cousin, your son? Hath he provided this music? He is very busy about it, but brother, I can tell you strange news that you yet dreamed not of. Are they good? As he admits, stamps them, but they have a good cover. They show well outward. The prince and Count Claudio, walking in a thick pleached alley in mine orchard, were thus much overheard by a man of mine. The prince discovered to Claudio that he loved my niece, your daughter, and meant to acknowledge it this night in a dance. And if he found her accordant, he meant to take the present time by the top and instantly break with you of it. Hath the fellow any wit that told you this? A good sharp fellow. I will send for him and question him yourself. No, no, we will hold it as a dream till it appear itself. But I will acquaint my daughter with all, that she may be the better prepared for an answer, if peradventure this be true. Go you and tell her of it. Cousins, you know what you have to do. Oh, I cry you mercy, friend. Go you with me and I will use your skill. Good cousin, have a care this busy time. What the good year, my lord? Why are you thus out of measure sad? There is no measure in the occasion that breeds. Therefore, the sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. And when I have heard it, what blessing brings it? If not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. I wonder that thou, being as thou sayest thou art, born under Saturn, goes about to apply mortal medicine to a mortifying mischief. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause, and smile at no man's jests, eat when I have stomach, and wait uh, for no man's leisure, sleep when I am drowsy, and tend on no man's business, laugh when I am merry, and claw no man in his humor. Yea, but you must not make the full show of this till you may do it without controlment. You have of late stood out against your brother, and he hath ta'en you newly into his grace. Where it is impossible, you should take true root, but by the fair weather you make yourself. It is needful that you frame the season for your own harvest. I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. And it better fits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to rob love from any. In this, though, I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest man. 
it must not be denied, but that I am a plain-dealing villain. I am trusted with a muzzle and enfranchised with a clog. Therefore, I have decreed not to sing in my cage. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent? I make all use of it, for I use it only. Who comes here? What news, Boraccio? I came yonder from a great supper. The prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonato, and I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve any model to build mischief on? What is he for a fool that betroths himself to unquietness? Marriott is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio? Even he. A proper squire. And who and who? Which way looks he? Mary, on Hero, the daughter and heir of Leonato. A very forward march chick. How came you to this? Being entertained for a perfumer, as I was smoking a musty room, comes me the Prince and Claudio hand in hand in sad conference. I whipped me behind the heiress, and there heard it agreed upon that the prince should woo Hero for himself, and having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. Come, come, let us thither. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him in any way, I bless myself every way. You are both sure and will assist me? To the death, my lord. Let us to the great supper. Their cheer is the greater that I am subdued. Would the cook were of my mind. Shall we go prove what's to be done? We'll wait upon your lordship. And there we have the actual end of Act One. Bravo, bravo. Thank you, everyone. Now, before we stop the recording, does anybody have a website they want to plug or anything like that? Yes. <laughs> Feel free. Go for it www.lilyfieldsfiction.com. I post serial novels three times a week. You can read them Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I do science fiction and fantasy. Oh, wonderful. Could you paste the link just in case in the, te in the text chat? Working on it. And Nathan also has a website. Uh, I have a blog called earbirding.com where I uh, analyze bird sounds and everything that has to do with bird sounds. Uh, I post there about twice a month. Um, I write a blog called uh, Game View Fake Gaming News Print to Fit. And uh, I don't know, just Google it. It'll be at the top, trust me. You sure of himself? <laughs> Not really, guys. It pops up, really. I checked it. And I uh, just started being an occasional contributor at MediaTapper.com, uh, a great website with uh, articles and posts uh, relating to uh, social media. Uh, please check it out for uh, interesting articles and tips. And Phil? Nothing from me. I don't have any real presence out there. Well, you can find Phil and me on Google+. Yes, always on Google+. Plus. Phil is Phil Mandola, and I am M. Monica. And All right, everybody. Thank you very much. That is a wrap.